Hi guys, it's Stephanie. It's Wednesday, September 27th. All right, so the first thing I noticed when I went to work today was that my job cut my hours. They cut my hours. Is that what I need when I'm gonna be closing on a home within three weeks? It wasn't a drastic cut. Business is slow, but it's not good either. It's not good. Um, I took a day off last week from my part-time job, and I took off yesterday from my part-time job. Today, I'm naturally off my part-time job because I don't work there Wednesdays. But tomorrow and Friday, I'll be going in to my part-time job after my full-time. Work at my full-time job is slow. It's very slow. But at least I have a job and I'm grateful for that. I have a lot to talk about and some of the things I have to talk about have to do with um, the owners of the house where I made the offer and the sale right now is pending. So when I come back, I have some more news regarding those repairs or replacements of things in the house that have to be remedied. I've been waiting on the answer from the listing agent what the sellers want to do. If you saw my last video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and to those people just visiting my channel for the first time. If you guys find something or see something that resonates with you, with you guys, please consider on subscribing. If you subscribe, don't forget, to, don't forget to hit that subscribe key, okay? Give me a thumbs up and share. I need your help to build this channel up. Um, I don't have the most exciting things going on. I just hope you guys enjoy the bike ride I had with my friend. Um, as we do things, either alone or with my friends, I'll share with you guys. Bring a little bit of excitement and a little bit of drama. So I appreciate you guys. I'm not suggesting anything so complicated. So I've been in close contact with my realtor regarding the submittal of the um, sale agreement addendum. And I didn't want to keep calling her or texting her every hour to find out if she heard anything. These things take time. I'm sure on their end, they're taking the time they need to mull things over. However, Today, on the way home from work, I'm driving and my realtor sends me a text. She says, congratulations. <laughs> the sellers have agreed to fix or replace those things on the list that my home inspector found needed to be fixed or replaced. Whether they were plumbing, electrical, roofing, um, the leaks that were formed in the wall from the, uh, from the leaky roof, all those things. 
are going to be remedied. And it was a close call because I did sign an as-is sale agreement. However, when you do that, it's before the uh, home inspection. They can find anything. But I'm happy to say that the sellers agreed to take care of the problems that's in the house. So now the closing is going to be October 18th, but some of my friends tend to think that it could be extended. Well, um, the lending company is still waiting for me to submit them an insurance company. The house has to be insured. But the insurance company can't move forward until these problems have been remediated. So in order for me to have the roof inspected, I got to wait for it to be repaired first. Okay. And then there's a question about the breaker panel. The breaker panel is going to be inspected. Why? Because the inspector said, that there was some corrosion inside the breaker panel box where the wiring are. So that's got to be done. Now, I have a small patio out back. In Florida, we call patios lanai's. In the lanai, uh, on, the, on the door entrance, there's two tall eight-foot doors Okay, double doors. One of the doors can't close all the way. That was on the home inspection and that's gonna be remediated. Okay. Um, plumbing stuff. Under the kitchen sink, in the bathroom and in the kitchen, the plumbing valves are rusty. They need to be replaced. Okay, so a little while ago here when I was sitting here watching television, my realtor contacted me again to tell me that these things have to be discussed over by each contractor uh, of whom are going to take care of these things and see how they're going to go about doing it. There's only one way of doing it, and that's the right way. Um, I'm still worried about the roof. The roof was patched over once already. They replaced a section of shingles and how much how many more times can they repair this they might replace it it's 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 way to be seen because this the problem was when it rained water was getting in okay to me it sounds like it should be replaced are they going to spend eight thousand dollars or eight or ten thousand dollars to replace that. The home is not a standalone single family home. My home is sandwiched between two other homes. You have five homes. They all share the same roof. They're townhomes, okay? And the roof, according to my insurance company, has to have a minimum life of five years. So what's gonna happen is, I've decided with my realtor that whoever repairs the roof must be a licensed roofer, okay? Or a licensed building contractor. They can do the work on the roof and they can also inspect the roof. And along with that, they have to perform a general roof inspection when it's all done. And the roof has to undergo a mitigation um, inspection, a wind mitigation inspection. And they also want a four point 
roof inspection. I guess the four point roof inspection is one which they have to go in the crawl space of the roof or like they call it up north attic. They got to go there and inspect from point A to point B from one end to the opposite end and see where, there are, where the shingles are all um, fastened to the frame. That's the wind mitigation. A four point is where they see where all the rafters tie in and see if they're in good shape, um, if, they're, if they look strong, if they're not rotted, that kinds of stuff. When that roof inspection is done, they're gonna go ahead and fill out a form from the insurance company, which is gonna state their uh, um, particular license, which has to be a roofing license or a building contractor license, submit it to the insurance company. They send me the report and I forward it to my insurance agency. And then I get my uh, home insured and then what I do is I submit this to the lenders and then the home is insured. That's the last step for the loan process. And then the whole thing um, has, to be, has to be agreed upon by the underwriters, I assume. As far as I'm concerned, I don't need to submit any more signatures or or proof of income or any information pertaining to me to the underwriters i'm all done with that so basically what i'm doing is i'm kind of sitting here in limbo waiting for everybody else to do their job and catch up yeah it can be very frustrating but i'm not as frustrated and as nervous or stressed as I was when I had to backtrack my finances and call up my, my phone for, for a one company and do a paper trail trace to get the proper forms of when I sold the car because you see, when I sold the Mercedes, I dumped a big check into my checking. I put over $20,000 into my checking when I was paid for my car. They wanna know where that money came from. That was frustrating. And if, if the uh, proof of uh, deposit or withdrawal is not sufficient to the underwriters, they're gonna ask me to do it over again. Give them a, a different one. Because you see, every paper trail has to have a transaction on it. My name's gotta be on it. If, it, if, it, if the money was tied to my 401k or for my IRA or whatever, I need to supply them the evidence. They wanna make sure that I'm not involved in racketeering or I'm not selling drugs, that the money that's in my checking is legit before we can go forward. So that part's all done, thank God. That part's all done. As you recall, the three reporting agencies, one of them might have been Equifax, okay, gave them the wrong information on a Capital One account. They only submitted them 12 freaking digits instead of 16. They grilled me for this. For three days, they grilled me until Capital One contacted me and told me that, that the lender never got the full account numbers, which is supposed to be 16, not 12. That's one of the things that can happen. These little things like this can hold you back. So what else could possibly happen? Well, after all is said and done, when the, homes are, when the home is repaired and all those things on the list is taken care of 
and the lender has the home insured, when I submit them the information, things could still go wrong. I could still be denied a loan, okay? Even though they're all congratu even though they're all congratulating me on moving forward and that the sellers have agreed to to do their due diligence and go ahead and take care of the property before we close, things can still happen. You know? They could do another credit check and find out that I got more balances on my on my credit card. They don't want to see uh, any more huge deposits going in because it's going to be back it's going to go back to we want to see where that money came from they don't want to see any big purchases in other words they don't want to see me buying a ten thousand dollar item or a two thousand dollar big uh, LED TV or something like that you know, so yeah, so I'm, quite, I'm trying to stay on the down low. I don't want to spend any money. I'm watching my going out to eat because my friends are keep asking me, hey, you want to go out to eat today? I am a foodie, but I got to watch it. Okay, so yeah. So that's what's happening. So if anybody is out there who knows me, I can't go out to eat every single day or every single week. I went out yesterday and I did my groceries. And uh, yesterday I made some American chop suey and I bought some fresh fruit, I bought some fruit salad, I bought some bread, I bought some cereal, some milk. Because after all, if you see my past videos, I do like to cook sometimes. Going out to eat can cost more money than more money than than you know. First, you got to jump in your car, you got to spend your gas to go way out there to go eat, and you sit there when you got food at home. So, right now, I'm just happy that things are moving forward. Things are moving forward, and I'm just going to take things one day at a time if it's meant to be it's going to be so it's getting late now it's like almost what eight o'clock it's uh 25 of eight man time flies i came home from work i had dinner my american chop suey and i had a couple of plates of fresh fruit salad with watermelon uh, melons, uh, strawberries, pineapples, and all that stuff. And I'm full. And then I had a small bowl of cereal on top of that. I'm very full. So I'm going to go back over here, finish watching my movie, and then I'll let you guys in on what's happening the rest of the week. I just want to let you, I just, just want to let you guys know that everything is still moving forward with this home. So I hope you guys have a nice evening and I'll be talking to you guys very, very soon.